It was Sunday, October 1st, and I was at Grand Villa playing an evening session of 2-5. At my table, there were around 5 players, including myself, who were 5-10 regulars. But at the time, there weren't enough players to start the 5-10 game. That's okay, we were already aware that on Sundays, the 5-10 doesn't always open. So we were all playing our game, chatting it up, and having a pretty good time. At around 9pm, one of the players got a text message from another 5-10 regular, saying he was at the Hard Rock Poker Room waiting to play 5-10. This was a surprise to us because it was well known that the only 5-10 casino game in Lower Mainland BC is at Grand Vila, and there's nowhere else that this game is offered. So another player at the table calls the Hard Rock Poker Room manager to ask about this 5-10 game. Apparently, tonight is their first night offering this game and it's their quote-unquote grand opening night. But they haven't been able to get a game started yet. There were, however, six people live on the waiting list. We continued chatting at our table and spitballed the idea that we could go to Hard Rock now and play 510. The friend that was already at Hard Rock though told us by text message that we shouldn't bother coming because it didn't look like they were going to start it. So we decided to confirm for ourselves. Our involuntary leader slash organizer called Hard Rock again, but this time asked the poker room manager to confirm with everyone on the waiting list if they would indeed play if at least three more players arrived. The manager said yes, the players would play for sure. So our leader signed up three additional names to the waiting list. The names used were Big Fish, Medium Fish, and Little Fish. And with that, we all started heading out to Hard Rock. We arrived at Hard Rock and checked in, but the six people that were supposed to play decided to change their minds. And for a moment, we still didn't have enough people to play 510. Fortunately for us, two more 510 regulars arrived at Grand Villa shortly after we left, found out we all went to Hard Rock, and came over as well. So we did end up with enough people to start the game after all. And this is how I was part of opening the first ever 510 game at Hard Rock Vancouver. For the first interesting hand, I pick up ace-queen on the button. Under the gun limps and then plus one raises to $40. Everyone folds to me. I have options of calling or raising here. In this spot, I mix it up quite a fair bit with probably a slightly higher frequency of re-raising. For this hand though, the under the gun limp is a bit strange and I'm not sure if he's going for a fishy limp re-raise. Plus one is a very solid player and I'm sure he can see this as well, but he still decided to open with so many players behind. I decide to cold call this one in position and not risk making it too expensive to go beyond the flop. The blinds fold and under the gun just calls. The flop comes ace jack eight with two hearts. Both villains check and I start with a tiny bet of $40. I'm still proceeding somewhat cautiously for now. It's a draw heavy board and I still think ace king is very much in their range. If I don't exercise pot control and one of them blasts at me on later streets, there really aren't any value hands I can beat here. Both villains call. The turn is an eight. They check again. Now I'm more confident in my hand being in the lead. Unless they boat it up, I don't think they can check the turn here with the hand that beats mine. So now I can size up here and get value from draws or a weaker ace. I bet slightly more than half pot and make it $150. Both of them fold and I take it down. This hand, I have 7-8 of clubs in middle position. I open to $30, low jack calls and small blind calls. The flop comes 5 of clubs, 9 of clubs, and jack of diamonds. This is an amazing flop for my hand. I have a flush draw and double gutter, and one of those outs is for the straight flush as well. The small blind checks to me, with so much equity here, there are a lot of options I can go with on this flop. What I don't want to risk is checking the street and having the player behind me check back. I opt to go with a small bet of $30. I'm happy if they both call to build a pot. I'm also happy if I get check raise and I could consider going over the top in that spot. Hard Rock does let you run it twice, so that could be pretty fun. 
Getting two folds is not terrible either, as I only put in 30 bucks to take down a pot with eight high. It's always nice to hit the board hard. Both opponents call. The turn is the king of hearts. I don't improve, but I still have equity. Small blind checks, I check, and then low jack bets $100. The small blind folds, and I have the option of calling or raising. I think that a check raise would have been really good on the flop, but doing it on the turn would commit myself to a really big size bluff on the river if I miss and decide to go that route. This villain is quite good at bluff catching, so I don't want to risk too much on a bluff against him, and I don't think my line would make sense anymore to rep any good value hands. Raising on the turn would be a very valid option if I were in position, but I think now I just have to call and pretty much play my hand face up, letting him know I'm on a draw. I call. The river is the ace of clubs. I do manage to realize my equity by hitting one of my outs. I am now just thinking of my riverbed sizing, as I don't think checking is an option. I'm thinking that if he has any one pair hand, that ace of clubs is the worst scare card for him. I decide on a bet of $100, which might get called by one pair if he reads me as having a worse pair going for a blocker bet. The villain tanks for a while and calls. I table my hand and he mucks. These two hands were pretty much it in terms of interesting hands this session. I only played in this game for less than two hours because I just suddenly got super tired. This is my second session of this evening and the previous night I played in a home game till quite late. It was actually none other than Greg's game. Because it's like, if I suck out, I stack two players. <laughs> game for suck out. So. But if I call, if I, if I don't win, I lose money. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's a call. Okay, it's queen knight, it's three pair on the bottom, good? Greg Goes All In is his channel, if for whatever reason you don't know him. He's a really nice guy, gracious host, and in my opinion, super talented comedic writer and actor. I had a blast at his place and look forward to playing in more of his games. I am now going to share a couple hands from my 2-5 game earlier in the evening at Grand Villa. I didn't film any footage for that session because I actually wasn't planning to film at all tonight. That is until I got this opportunity to document history with the first 5-10 game at Hard Rock. Anyways, I am in the button with 4-7 offsuit. There are 3 limpers and I limp as well. Small blind folds and big blind checks. The flop comes ace 3-5 with 2 clubs. Big blind leads out for $20. Everyone calls. I just managed to get great odds to call a double gutter. I call. The turn is an offsuit 6, and I drill the nut straight. Everyone checks to me. I am in a dream spot right now, in position, multi-way with the nuts. I bet $70. The big blind calls, and Tino, who is under the gun, tanks for a little while and folds. I'm going to circle back to this later. Everyone folds. The river is a brick, and I still have the nuts. Big blind checks. I think of a sizing to get max value. The villain checked two streets, so I think he wants to get to showdown as cheaply as possible. It's leading towards top pair with an ace, I think. He did lead out on the flop with four people behind him though, so I do think it's slightly possible he could have two pair. I decide to bet $200. He tanks for a bit and then folds. So the reason I have Tino named here, I also like to call him the godfather of Grand Villa Poker Room. Anyways, he told me later that he folded ace-3 this hand. I had not told him what I had, and he was able to get away with two pair here. And the bet was only $70 on the turn. So props to Tino. I don't know how I did it, but he was able to own me this hand. This hand, I have ace-king of spades in the small blind. The cutoff opens to $15. The button folds, and I-3 bet to $60. Big blind folds, and the cutoff calls. The flop comes 7 deuce 5 with 2 spades. This is an amazing flop. This villain is a very solid 510 regular as well as, from what I know, an even better tournament player. He has a lot of moves in his arsenal, including triple barreling in situations like this, which I've seen him do many times. So for this hand, I decided to check all the way to feed him the rope. My hand is so strong right now in terms of equity and showdown value. If I catch him going for one of his triple barrels here, I might even call down without hitting any of my outs, depending on the board texture. I check. The villain bets $35. I call. The turn is a 7. I am pretty happy about this turn card, even though I didn't hit my flush. 
because this is one of the cards that could lead into a board where Ace-King High is still really good for showdown. I check. The villain bets $125. It's really good sizing from him, and as I expected, I call. The river is a four of spades. Hitting nut flush definitely makes it easier for me, but I am following through with my plan of checking three times. I don't think he could have connected that well here, so I do think my best play is to rope him into the third barrel. I check. The villain bets $400. I think for just a little bit, if I should just call or raise. In this spot, I'm pretty confident with my read, so I just don't see any value in raising a bluff. All his value hands that would call a raise um, beats mine, and he is definitely good enough to fold value hands that lose to mine, like smaller flushes or overpair. I just call. He says I'm good, and I show my hand. For my 2-5 session, I bought in for $1,400 and cashed out for $1,995. That's a profit of $595. For my 5-10 session, I ended up pretty even. I was up around $100. I didn't bother doing the graphics for it. 